Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question related to the lymphatic system. I think you'll enjoy this one. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we are starting up our VIP program over at PT Final Exam. This is our flagship product where we're able to go through all of the content on the FSBPT content outline. It's extremely question centric. So we spend a lot of time dissecting out and doing practice practice questions together. Uh, this is the most evidence-based way of preparing for exam day. That's something that I've been working on really for the last 11 years is trying to find the best, easiest, and most evidence-based way to improve your test performance on the NPTE. Now, as far as what really works, so I've talked about this in previous episodes, but on the list of things that work the best include low stakes quizzing. So this frequent low stakes quizzing, it's really just what you'd expect. It's where you you try to quiz yourself on content that you should know. Now, what we try to do in our class is we try to incorporate lots and lots of practice questions and the content they contain into these very brief questions and answers, these, these quizzes, so to speak, where you're able to go through the content and apply it in your mind in a way that makes a lot of sense. And so, again, one of the things that, that I recall back from... Uh, I mean, they, they teach this all kinds of places, but certainly in psychology, they talk about how everything we learn has to be in a schema. So what does that mean? To be in a schema means that it something has to relate to something else. And I talk about this a lot in like study tips and tricks, mnemonics, acronyms, all these are ways to keep the content in a schema in your mind. The simplest example of this is like if you meet someone new and you learn their name, you try to imagine someone else that you also know with that same name standing by them and it helps to create that correlation in your mind. Another way is to think of like a rhyme, like there's one that I, I remember from uh, PT content is neuropraxia, it's coming backsia. So neuropraxia is that transient ischemia, ischemia that occurs when you're like your arm or your leg falls asleep. So neuropraxia, it's coming backsia. I can remember that because it is formulated in this schema in my mind. And so that's what we try to do in the VIP classes. We spend a lot of time going through content, but content that's applied into a way that you can remember it. And that's really the biggest key is not just seeing the content, but also understanding and applying that content. And so that's why in the VIP program, we spend a ton of time on practice questions and it's done in a live small group setting. So we're able to, to answer everyone's questions. So if there's ever any follow-up question or anything that you wanna talk about, we can do so because it is a smaller group setting. Now, this is different from a lot of the other P NPT providers you'll find out there is number one, either it's totally pre-recorded, or number two, it's in a very large group setting where you're not able to get your questions answered. It's It tends to be a lot more chaotic. And so in the VIP program, again, it's meant to be a small group setting, get your questions answered. It, it's a great way to very calmly and effectively study for the exam in a way that is is going to really work. It's going to actually stick the content in your mind for test day. And uh, we just got, in fact, as I'm recording this, we just got results in from the July exam. Many, many, many students passed. In fact, we have an over 90% pass rate for students who who go through the whole program. And it, that's really, I, I really hang my hat on that because we spend a lot of time with students who are, or what I would consider high risk. So students who are uh, have been out of school for a very long time, they struggle during PT school, they require test accommodations. I mean, you name it, either that or, or even failed attempts. I've had a lot of people who've joined the class after a previously failed attempt and then gone on to pass the test. Uh, and I mean, the number of students I've had who have been able to pass on the sixth attempt, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth attempt on the exam, it's it's something that is truly inspiring to see these students overcome these challenges. And it's really a privilege that I have to be, to get that front row seat, to see them work through and get to the other side of this test. So if you're looking for a very robust program, you'll want to check out the VIP program. The great news is that this week, as I'm recording this and posting this, this is the first week of August, really the first week of August. So tomorrow, August 8th, as uh, we roll this out, tomorrow, August 8th, we have a free session dedicated to the exam blueprint and how to make an effective study plan. We also have another free session later this week on Thursday, where we will go through multiple choice questions and how to dissect out and make multiple choice questions a good part of your study process. So again, these are, I would consider this like our VIP preview. Uh, if you want access to that, all you have to do is go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, 
And be sure to sign up for the list there where you can access. And if you've already signed up, go and hit it again and you'll be able to access these free webinars. It, again, totally free. Uh, all you have to do is just go and click in at the appointed time. Again, that's on Tuesday, Thursday. Both of those will be at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, a lot of people ask me, are the recordings available for that? And yes, they will be available in our VIP program. We have a course dashboard where you will be able to easily review the recordings afterward. Uh, we do have some previous versions of that on our YouTube channel. So you'll want to check out our YouTube channel as well as all of our other Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, really anywhere anywhere you want to find us will be there. So be sure to check that out. Again, that's this week. And you can get all the details at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast in order to join us for those free sessions this week. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. This is related to the lymphatic system. So as you recall, the lymphatic system incorporates somewhere between three and eight questions on the exam. Certainly not a large system. However, it is an important system as all of them are. So today we'll be talking through lymphatic interventions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. Which of the following long-term goals is most appropriate for a patient with unilateral lower extremity lymphedema? So again, which of the following long-term goals is most appropriate for a patient with unilateral lower extremity lymphedema? So we have number one, the patient's involved lower extremity will be within 10% volume of the uninvolved lower extremity within five weeks. Two, the patient will be independent in the application of compression garments to the involved lower extremity within six weeks. Three, the patient will demonstrate improved ambulation within three weeks. And four, the patient will display reduced limb volume to increase ambulation tolerance. So number one, the patient's involved lower extremity will be within 10% volume of the uninvolved lower extremity within five weeks. Two, the patient will be independent in the application of compression garments to the involved lower extremity within six weeks. Three, the patient will demonstrate improved ambulation within three weeks. And four, the patient will display reduced limb volume, reduced limb volume to increase ambulation tolerance. So this question is dedicated to goals and how to write good goals as a PT. And so the correct answer here is that number two, the patient will be independent in the application of compression garments to the involved lower extremity within six weeks. So the components of a good goal should be, should it certainly include being measurable, functional, and time limited. So measurable, functional, time limited. That's when, so when we look and dissect out the other answer options, we'll find that they are missing components of that measurable, functional, and time limited. So the first one, the first incorrect answer option is the patient's involved lower extremity will be within 10% volume of the uninvolved lower extremity within five weeks. So this particular goal lacks a functional component. While it is specific in that you are truly, you're measuring 10% to the limb volume should be within 10% of the uninvolved limb. And, and, you know, as a PT, we spend a lot of time comparing one side to the other side, especially if one side is involved and the other side is uninvolved. We can do get a lot of comparison data from that. However, there's no functional component. So most PT goals should have some functional component. So if we were to change this goal, the goal would probably include something like this. The patient's lower extremity will be within 10%, the involved lower extremity will be within 10% volume of the uninvolved lower extremity in order to improve ambulation distance and tolerance. So it is specific with the 10% volume. So we're trying to get it within 10% volume of the uninvolved extremity. It's time limited. And then if we add a functional component, it would then meet all of the criteria of a good goal. The other incorrect answer options include the patient will demonstrate improved ambulation within three weeks. So this is obviously lacking a measurable component. So improved ambulation is functional, but it is not measurable. How do you measure improved ambulation? Well, usually you'd want to have some mention of like the timed up and go tip timed up and go test, the 10 meter walk test, uh, gate speed, gate quality. So you could talk about, uh, demonstrate uh, an ambulation with no limp within three weeks or no antalgic gate pattern. So you can see how you could be much more specific or measurable with that improved ambulation. And finally, the last incorrect answer option is the patient will display reduced limb volume to increase ambulation tolerance. So again, reduced limb volume and ambulation tolerance, although there is a functional component, but there's no time limited component. There's no measurable portion of this. It makes it incorrect. And so when you are looking at questions like this, because I can guarantee some questions like this on test day that, that ask you to parse out what a good goal would be. 
Look to see if it's measurable, functional, and time limited. So those three components. So uh, those of you enjoying the YouTube version of this, I'm gonna put up a slide that, that talks about these, the measurable, functional, and time limited parts of a goal. This is related somewhat to a SMART goal. Do you remember the acronym SMART, Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based? S-M-A-R-T, a SMART goal. So this is, again, a fabulous guideline for a goal. It's not as PT specific, but to be specific and measurable, again, that that is really yeah, one of the most important components of a good goal is that it's specific and measurable. Attainable and relevant, so that's where the functional component kicks in. Uh, so for instance, you wanna make sure that a person is able to ambulate, uh, they need to negotiate stairs, to don and off clothing, all those things need to be relevant. That's the R and SMART to be relevant. And that would be that would correlate to the functional component of a good goal. And then finally, the last one is time-based or time-limited, indicating that there is a specific time frame in which you expect to achieve this goal. And that, again, should be determined by you as a PT and the prognosis of the patient. Uh, for instance, someone with a, uh, let's say they have a T12 spinal cord injury, a T12 complete spinal cord injury, you would probably not write a goal, the patient will be able to ambulate 500 feet in two weeks. Chances are you'd want to do something that's much more relevant and functional for the patient, which would include, uh, say, transferring supine to sit with modified independence in two weeks. So you can see how you need to have it relevant to the case, have it be functional, so measurable, functional, and time limited. So the secret on test days is to look for those and if it's not functional related, and almost always the way they write these tricky questions is they'll write, like what I did on this one is I wrote something that is truly measurable, so the limb volume, but I didn't make it functional. So that's usually the differentiating factor here is what is functional and relevant to the patient. And that's where you'll find that the correct, most of the time the correct goal will be that. And so again, the correct answer here was the patient will be independent in the application of compression garments to the involved lower extremity within six, six weeks. So they're independent, that's measurable. So according to the FIM score, the functional independence measure score, they can be independent, they can require minimum assist, maximum assist, or be dependent for tasks. And so in this case, they're, they're looking for, you'd want the patient to be independent with the application of the compression garments to the involved lower extremity within six, six weeks. So this is related to their home exercise program and the management of lymphedema, so it is extremely relevant that they be on board and able to participate in the complete decongestive therapy, which includes lots and lots and lots of compression, so it has a much better functional component uh, for their independent application of the compression garment. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Again, don't forget to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast if you want to join us for our free webinars. And that is updated frequently, so be sure to check back on our other podcast episodes as we get, uh, certainly as we get more podcast episodes down the road. Check that out, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this podcast. Have a fabulous day, everyone. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks. Thanks.